Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. So, uh, in this episode of the YouTube Shop, uh, uh, YouTube <laughs> Shop Student Apprentice, or whatever you want to call it, um, I'm to the point now where I really would like to use my four-jaw chuck. So this is a six-inch four-jaw independent chuck um, that was purchased from Shars, and in addition to that. A uh, cast iron back plate was uh, purchased for it. Um, so I have to turn the step down here uh, to fit inside the register here of the chuck. So let's start out with getting a few measurements. Um, I need to know um, how, how deep this is, but it's not really important at this point because I can always face this off if I get a little too much. But I need to know what size to turn this, uh, to turn this step here on the back plate. Now... Um, I really don't have anything to measure this with, right? Other than uh, six inch, uh, my six inch uh, steric caliper. So I'm gonna uh, try to get by with that. Now, I will have to say that uh, since the jaws are independent here, that if I'm off just a little bit, it shouldn't impact it. This uh, uh, this back plate is pre-drilled for this chuck. It came that way from Shars. There's supposed to be um, uh, supposed to be matched together or you know at least the bolt patterns are so if I'm off a little bit what I should see is a little run out on the chuck but uh, you know which I guess could you know affect it at real high speeds but um, uh, I think I'll be okay uh, because the uh, jaws are independent uh, run out doesn't you know a few thousandths uh, really doesn't matter because it'd be taken out with the uh, the independent jaws here so let's uh, let's uh, get some measurements here Make sure my okay, I'm reading zero. So let's see if I can get a few measurements. All right, and I'm moving this back and forth to get the highest reading. So that looks like. Take this a little bit and it looks about like five and 118 so it's pretty consistent and that's five and 118 and that's pretty consistent the bore on this chuck is supposed to be I think 130 millimeters which is um, five inches, it, it, you know, it's equal to five inches and 118 thousandths. So that's what I need to uh, shoot for here. So uh, let me get the camera set up in a in a in a place where I hope that you guys can see me uh, doing this, and and uh, well, we'll see what happens. So I'll see you here in just a minute. Okay, so hopefully you can see this. I got the tool set up um, about out, out as far as I can get. I have the um, I have the lathe set in the lowest speed, not in back gears. I forget what that is off the top of my head. I think it's 200 and something RPM. I'm just going to take it slow. I don't have to take much off of here. I get my initial reading and see what we got and mark that down. So, yep, we're good. All right, so our target is 5.118 and right now oops let's see where we're at we're at 5.205 so let me write that down all right 5.205 <clears throat> and we'll have to touch off here and take a light cut and see how much we got to go. Like I said, our target is 5.118. So let me get down here close and um, uh, let's see here. I'm going to try to maybe keep 
things a little clean I'm gonna get some paper towels down here maybe try to keep some of well, let's see here that would even work remember I'm a new guy here uh, you know what I don't want that wrapped up I don't want that wrapped up in anything so you know what I'm just gonna I'll clean up the mess afterwards all right so hopefully there's enough light let me uh, see if I can get a little more on it and not get in my own way maybe that'll help all right guys wish me luck man I'm touching there and I'm gonna take hang on let me come back in here okay I'm touching there all right, so so 205 minus 118 is so about 87 thousandths is what I need to take about. So I'm going to take uh, let's see. Just going to take about seven this pass. Okay. Now that I got a cut on there, let's take a measurement and see where we're at. And I know that. Uh, if I were you guys, I'd be laughing at me right now, right? Because uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing. But I'm going to take my time and see where we get there. All right, so I'm at 5, 191. So I got another 73,000. So we're going to take a little bit bigger bite. Let's take uh let's take 20, which would take 40 off the diameter, right? All right, so I'm taking 20. I'm going to take another cut here. See where we're at. All right, so I'm at five one fifty one. Five one fifty one. So that I that took the forty I expected. So Five one fifty one, and we're wanting to go to one eighteen. So these thirty three thousandths. Tell you what, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take fifteen. And that should get us pretty close. All 
right, let's see where we're at now. All right, I'm at five one twenty two. Five one twenty two. And I want to be at 18. So I need to take off four. So I'm going to take off two thousandths this pass. Okay, I'm at five, one, about eighteen and a half. Let's try the chuck. It's wanting to go. So, tell you what, I'm going to take another thou. Pretty close here. Oh yeah. And I'm not feeling any play. That's all the way up against there. So I think that's got it. So the only other thing I'm gonna do here is I am slightly undercut right here. I'm just gonna bring this in and skim right across the side here without changing my depth of cut. I'm going to lock my carriage. Uh oh. I'm out of movement. Alright, so I'm going to have to. And think about that, guys. I got that partially cleaned up, but I'm out of movement. So let me, hmm, let me do this. Turn my compound because that's what's interfering. I don't think that I'm really out of movement, although I'm close. <clears throat> I'm gonna turn it about 90. And remember, I'm I'm a newbie at this, so. You guys gonna have to, uh, you, know, you can give me some correction. <clears throat> All right, let's see what what can I do here. So what I'm going to try to do is touch off on this edge just as light as I possibly can, bring it in, and then skim this off. Wish me luck.
Okay. A little happy there. Alright. Let me lock my carriage. See if I can face this out. All right, unlock my carriage here and you know it looks pretty good for rank amateur guys. What do you think? All right, let's check the chuck. Slides on there. I don't feel any play. All right, so. Let me uh, reposition the camera and we'll get this uh, chuck bolted to the faceplate and back on there and see what we got. So I'll bring you right back. Okay guys, I'm back. Hey look, you know I don't know why I was so nervous about that. That seemed to go pretty good unless I'm in for a really big surprise. And you know that's about the first real thing that I, I done on the lathe. Although I didn't break this edge. Um, I'm just going to leave it. So anyway, I put it in back gears and loosened up the back plate. All right, so that fits on there. I'm not feeling any play, so let's see what we got here. I thought about maybe trimming the back plate, you know, so it was even with this chuck, but you know, there's not a lot of meat right here where these screws go, so. Okay, so those are all just gently snugged. Alright, so I'm going to tighten them down. And we're going to see what kind of run out we got here. Now I'm thinking that... Uh, um, if I did overcut my... Uh, you know my shoulder a little bit then there's probably just a little bit of slack I could probably bump this thing around but then again maybe if the maybe if it's uh, out around um, but we'll see so let's uh, get this back on the spindle here tell you what I'll put this back in back gears See what we got. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. You know, um, uh, I think I want to put an indicator on here and just see uh, what kind of run out we got here, if any. So let me uh, let me get the indicator set up and reposition the camera, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I have the indicator set up here on the body of the chuck and uh, got it zeroed. Hopefully, you can see it there. So we're going to give it a few revolutions to see what kind of run out the uh, body of the chuck has. 
there's a thousandths, one and a half, there's two thousandths, so I'm seeing about two and a, two and a half thousandths. Uh, let's see, there's zero, five, one, one and a half, two. All right, so I guess you guys can see that. It looks like I'm running probably two thousandths out. So, um, what do you guys uh, what do you guys think of that? And is that uh, I, I think that'd be okay. I mean, uh, maybe not running at real high speeds, but uh, I don't know how much uh, out of balance that would throw it. So anyway, uh, so I. I Turned the uh, step down on the back plate, got the chuck mounted, um, about two thousandths uh, um, run out on the chuck body. I don't think that that really matters. I think I could probably loosen these bolts on that go into the chuck, and I could probably t tap the chuck around, but I think I'd want a more reliable indicator before I started doing that because this, uh, this little Shars indicator, um, I mean, I think it does okay. Um, but you know when I go to uh, you know maybe it's the indicator stand or or whatever. But you know when I go to uh, try to zero it, it's it's pretty touchy, or maybe that's just the way the dial test indicators are. You know, um, and I just have not uh, got my sense of uh, soft touch yet, or maybe you know it's got a stiffer than usual bezel or bezel on it or something like that. So anyway, let me uh, let me get the camera set back up and let me. Uh, let me talk just a bit about uh, what I think I learned here and uh, give some credit where some credit's due. So I will see you here in just a minute. Okay guys, um, so here's some things that I learned being a newbie and uh, probably have to remember this uh, next time. I need to make sure that uh, my tool, the travel that I need out of the tool is available when I set up so I don't have to readjust and try to touch back off and, and that sort of thing. So my tool positioning cutting the cutting the uh, shoulder was okay but it didn't have enough travel coming out um, to face off the inside of the uh, the face of the uh, back plate itself so that's that's a lesson learned um, cast iron is nasty man it's some dirty stuff right um, but hey I've had four teenage boys in my house I we got dirty covered um, so other than that I need to uh, I need to thank Mr. Pete 222 uh, on his videos on um, doing um, a backplate for Chuck, and there's another uh, a number of other guys out there that have showed how to do um, uh, backplates. But you know, without their videos and without uh, me having the opportunity to see them, you know, um, it would have been that much harder for me. I think that um, I worried more about it than what I really needed to. It seemed like a pretty simple process. Um, I did cut on the lowest speed. I used a uh, brace carbide uh, uh, tool, the same one I was doing my test cuts with. I cut just beautifully, I think. Uh, very, very nice finish on there, and and uh, f it fit with no play. Um, I probably could have had better measuring tools, but hey, I have what I have, and and uh, and I'm I'm learning, and I'm and I'm happy with that. So the next thing I'll probably do while um, off camera is uh, practice centering some stock up in here, and maybe making a few more chips, just because I think I need the practice. Uh, if you guys got any suggestions on something that I done wrong, or something that I could have done better, uh, share those with me, please. Uh, I don't mind constructive criticism. I actually welcome it. So, um, unlike uh, some of the youngsters that I deal with these days, um, you know, <laughs> people our age uh, tend to understand you get better with uh, with uh, a little judicious application of criticism. So. Um, so what's next? I'm not real sure. I'll let you know. Uh, I am uh, have started uh, drafting a series on CNC uh, for the hobbyist. Okay, and if you guys are interested in that, please let me know. So my intentions are to um, uh, I want somebody to be able to watch a series of videos and get a good understanding of how these machines are set up. Right? Um, what it takes to uh, to build your own. I mean CNC can literally mean anything whether if it's a CNC lathe or mill which I'm sure you're all familiar with 3D printers that I'm sure you're all familiar with but you know you have things like hexapods and part pickers and 
part placers and uh, there's just a myriad of things that CNC could be used for and um, and controlled uh, by a computer and uh, so I would I'd like to talk a little bit about that about the controller and the controller uh, in particular that I want to talk about is Linux CNC and uh, in my first uh, in my first episode that I hope to release here in, in a few days or maybe a week or so because I'm still drafting it up uh, because it'd be a computer presentation for the most part um, I'll talk more about the different controllers that are available and, and what they do so my big question is um, would anybody be interested in some of that stuff? That's something that I do have a little bit of experience in. I've built two CNC routers uh, since 2006. I've cut numerous uh, wooden projects, you know, because they're they're router based. Um, but I can, uh, but I think I have a lot to share, and and I think that I have some stuff that might make getting over that learning hump just a little bit easier. So anyway, if you're interested, let me know. Hey, if these. Uh, uh, video, <laughs> videos are entertaining or, or if you like them or you know somebody else will benefit please like subscribe and share uh, I'm, I'm trying to get a few more subscribers and and uh, just working at it um, uh, the interaction is what I like most and with more subscribers I get more interaction so continue thanks uh, to all those folks out there who uh, who watch my videos and and who post comments and send me emails Hey, keep them coming, guys. Man, I have learned so much from you. I, I don't even know where to begin uh, to express uh, the gratitude that I have. So I'll uh, not take up any more of your time. Um, have a good week. Uh, remember to be safe working around uh, machinery. Um, another net. Have a blessed day.